You're listening to Every Day's a Saturday USMC Veteran Podcast. Now introducing your host of Every Day's a Saturday USMC Veteran, the one-man show Brian Roof. Hey, what's going on, friends and family guests? Thank you so much for tuning in to Every Day's a Saturday. All right, so we got another great interview today lined up. This guy is a United States Marine, so he's a badass. Uh, He also has a podcast. It's called Homefront Sit Rep Podcast. Um, We're going to get to learn all about him and everything he's doing and uh, what he did in the Marine Corps, all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and meet our next guest, David Willis Jr. What's up, brother? Hey, what's going on, buddy? Thanks for having me. Hey, man. Thank you for uh, coming on, bro. Hey, uh. We're ready to get to know all about you, man, you know, and tell us, you know, what made you decide to go be a badass Marine. All right, let's do it. (laughs) Uh, My name's David Willis. Uh, I grew up in uh, Bardstown, Kentucky, which is bourbon capital of the world. So, you know, I woke up every morning going, getting on that school bus and driving past the distillery and smelling that sour mash whiskey every day. Uh, (laughs) So played football from little league all the way up to high school, all the way to my senior year. as I, when I was younger, my, my grandfather, uh, actually told my mom and my aunts that, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be the one going into the military when I got older. And, uh, as I got older, I started, you know, learning about the different branches. Um, and me, I, I always like to challenge myself. Like, it's just something, you know, I'm five foot seven on a good day. Um, and so, you know, with being, you know, short in stature, you know, I had to push harder on the football field. So when I decided to join the military, uh, I was like, well, I want to be the best of the best. And at that time, of course, this was in 97, um, it was the Marine Corps. And, you know, so I, I took my, you know, took my ASFAB score and or took the ASFAB and got a 98. Um, walked in there and talked to the uh, recruiter, the Marine Corps recruiter, which was Gunny Groach at the time. And he goes, so you want to be a Marine? I was like, yes, sir. He goes, well, what job do you want in the Marine Corps? I said, sign me up for 0311 infantry. That's where I want to go. And um, so sure enough, um, that was an easy sell for him. He was like, all right, let's go. So he, you know, sent me down to Camp Lejeune or actually Paris Island. I don't know why I said Camp Lejeune. That's where my base station was, but went to Paris Island, uh, first battalion, uh, graduated from there, uh, went to Camp Geiger for school of infantry. And then what time, what's the timeline right right here? Uh, so 97. So June of 90 so it was June, June of 97 is when I joined, when I went to boot camp and then I graduated, what was that in September? June, July, August, yeah, September, late middle of September, sometime right there, right. And um, went to you know, uh, Camp Geiger for School of Infantry right after. So I came home for boot leave, um, and then like 10 days or whatever, the yeah, game. whatever, yeah, 10, yeah. 11 days, whatever that was. Yeah. Um, and then came back, no for, recruiting duty, huh? No, I didn't, I didn't do any recruiting duty, I not at all. Dude, I was like, I got an extra two weeks. <laughs> See, I, I thought I, I didn't even know what I didn't even think about doing recruiting duty. Um, it's just like uh, my orders was uh, after uh, after boot camp was to school of infantry. That was pretty much it. No. And then, you know, so we went and did the uh, school of infantry and then um, left from there that same day, joined second battalion, eighth Marines golf company, second Marine division. Um, I was with, uh, uh, golf company first platoon and, um, we pretty much deployed within two weeks after us getting there. Um, and we went over to, um, where did we went to Bridgeport, California was my first deployment actually up for cold weather training. And, uh, Oh, I've heard a lot about that place, man. I did it twice and it sucked oh, both no, times. It sucked, it sucked both times. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, man, uh, you know, so I did, so I did four years, two months. So I extended two months because during my time with first or second, second, eighth Marines, uh, you know, I did deployments to Okinawa. I did uh, Port-au-Prince, Haiti, did Bridgeport twice. I did uh, uh, 
South Korea, Pohong, South Korea. And I, I did all these things. Um, but in turn, I never, I wasn't going to make a med float. You know, I wasn't going to get on, get on a ship and go into the med. So I talked to a career planner and extended by, I think, two months. And then I did a lateral move to 1st Battalion, 8th Marines, Bravo Company to go on a med float with those guys because those guys were getting ready to go on a med float. And um, that was that was fun. That was, you know, that was quite a transition because you're so used to doing things, at, you know, like two eight way. And then you go over to 1st Battalion, 8th Marines and uh, it's a whole different, you know, chain of command and all of that. And it was it was just different. And uh, but it, it was good, though, because. Um, you know, I, I left two eight as a, uh, Lance corporal and got over to Bravo company uh, one eight. And a month later I was pinned corporal. Um, so that was fun. Um, so and that's kind of a good thing though, because you didn't have to really, I hated getting promoted with my, like the guys that I was just being Lance corporal with and you yeah, know, yeah. With. now I gotta get in these dudes ass, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> at least no, you didn't it, have to deal with that as much. Yeah, you know? I didn't have to. I didn't have to deal with that at all, and it was just. Right. It, it was good, even though you know I did have that month of you know that transition there, um, and getting to you know the, know the junior Marines that were there. Um, but here's also the bad thing about that, though. So I get over there and I become a team leader. So I got um, these three three Marines from California. Uh, Latino background, and uh, we're on this med float, and we were in, I want to say we were in Toronto, Italy, which is on the, so if you look in the map, it's on the back side of the boot, uh, and they were out, uh, so we pulled in port because Naples, so we were supposed to pull into Naples. Naples got bombed, or there was a bomb, you know, the, over in that area, and so they, de uh, we went around to the backside of the boot instead of going to Naples. And um, as we were in port, uh, I'm I'm on the ship doing whatever I'm doing, and the next day I get called to my company commander's office. Uh, my three Marines were out at a bar, drunk as a skunk, <laughs> rolling a joint at the table. Oh, and shore patrol no. and shore patrol rolls up on them. So here I am, you know, a fresh right. corporal, and my all of my guys are, you know, getting NJP'd and stuff. Uh, and then they wind up getting booted out once we got back stateside. Uh, it was that that was that was terrible. Um, but no, man. Uh, so I got out August of two thousand one, right before nine eleven happened. I was on terminal wow. leave. Uh, had thirty days. Uh, September one. Uh, was my EAS, uh, 9-11 happened. And I told my mom, I said, uh, I'm going back. Um, uh, I said, just be waiting for that Western union. And, uh, sure enough, um, probably about a month later, I got the Western union, please report back to camp, camp Lejeune for combat refresher training. So, um, I had a report date reported back. Um, and they put us with the mobilization support battalion. So technically wasn't active duty, but we were active reservists, I guess is what they considered us. Um, but I got two DD two fourteens out of the deal, uh, you know, two honorable discharges. So, uh, and then you know, I, it, it, it was crazy. <laughs> and and you, yeah. so during this process, I was also talking with an army recruiter cause I was going to do 20, 20 in the military. That was my plan. Um, but is as a Marine Corps infantry guy, you can't switch your MOS. It's so hard to switch your MOS to something else after your infantry. So my plan was to join the army, go to Germany for five years, um, go from E5 to E6, fifty thousand dollar enlistment bonus, and um, you know after after the first five years, I was going to be pretty much stateside, and I had it all in black and white. And the doctor who let me join the Marine Corps originally signed my orders, denied me from joining the army. And I'm like, dude, here's your <laughs> signature right here. And on my original orders. And he's like, I can't let you go. They, and their excuse was because I had asthmatic symptoms as a child. Never, never was diagnosed with asthma, just had asthmatic symptoms. But this was also in the time where if you had tattoos below your elbow, they wouldn't let you re-enlist. 
So I, I want to say that that was the reason why they wouldn't let me go in the army, but I'll never know. <laughs> well, shoot, man. I, maybe it was for the better. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think so too, because my current wife, so I, I was one of those young, dumb Marines. Uh, I got married to a stripper, which I didn't know. Oh. she was. So I didn't know she was a stripper at the okay. time. And so when I met her, uh, through a mutual friend that I grew up with, he was a Marine, he was an air wing. Uh, he says, Hey, I want to introduce you to this lady. And I was like, all right, cool. So me and her started talking. Uh, she was working at, uh, as a cashier at Kroger down in Jacksonville in shitville USA. And, um, so me and her started talking. Um, of course, you know, being infantry, you're always deployed. So we started dating. Um, and, I, I would say we dated, we dated for a year and a half and the whole time she was not a stripper, no mention to, to previous that she was a stripper before I met her. Um, so we dated now, granted being infantry, I was always gone in the field. So that year and a half, I was probably there maybe four, four, four to five months out of that year and a half. Uh, well, we decided to get married like a dummy and, um, Get that BAH. Yeah, got the, got the BAH, the BAQ. Uh, yeah, off, living, off base. Living off, yeah, living off yeah, base. Living yeah, off have to base. Deal with the fucking field days. I get it. All right. Yeah, yeah it's, and so it's a Marine Corps thing. <laughs> it is. It is. And you know, we we got married October of ninety nine. Uh, I brought her home to Kentucky for Thanksgiving that year. Uh, when we got back in the car to leave Kentucky, she looked at me. She said, "I'm never coming back to Kentucky." She had a not good experience let's put it that way and uh <laughs> uh so we get back to jacksonville and uh, i'm getting ready to deploy again to go to bridgeport for my second time so i deploy the first of december come back at the end of december a day early on the working events working party get get to my car drive home pull down my street and i'm like something's not right i got that gut feeling something wasn't right and uh sure enough i open up the front door and i hear music playing from the back bedroom and i walked down the hallway and the caught her in bed, bed and caught her in bed with a squid so uh, oh dude it was of all things too yeah, huh? yeah. and it, so the squid semen a semen yeah so he was her so the story that i was told before because i knew him like i knew who he was her Jody cousin was a semen. Yeah. Well, her cousin Brandy <laughs> was the one that had supposedly was dating this guy before. So they were friends. But come to find out, my my ex-wife was actually the one who dated him. And I'm like, you got so I just turned around and walked out, dude. I did I did the smart thing, you know, at least my head. Face. Yeah. And I went up to my buddy Jason and Belinda's house and knocked on their door, which was six houses from my house. And uh, Belinda opened the door and she said, she said, David, I got to tell you something. I said, no, you don't. I just called her. She goes, yeah, she's been cheating on you the whole time. Not just while you were gone, mm -hmm. but the whole time. I was like, you couldn't have told me that before I got married to her. Um, so I, I, the next morning I get up, I go to the house, grab all my stuff, everything that was mine. Um, of course, I was the one paying for the house. She wasn't, but I was paying for, you know, the rent on the house. And, uh, uh, so I grabbed all my shit and went back on base and, uh, went into the first sergeant's office and said, Hey, I need a, you know, barracks room because I'm moving back on base. He goes, what happened? I said, well, my, my wife is cheating on me. I caught her with a squid. He goes, okay. He says, I'm going to tell you this, you know, you're supposed to give her that BAQ, right? I'm like, yeah. He goes, okay. And then that was all he said. <laughs> I, and I never, I never did pay her. I never gave her a dime. So. But no, it was fun, man. I, I I I love the Marine Corps. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah, I mean, definitely had a lot of fun. And and you know, once it's kind of it's kind of funny. A lot of times, while you're in, you kind of want to get out. But then yeah. after you get out, you're like, oh man, kind of miss it. You know, kind of miss it. And it's 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 not the fuck, you know stuff that we went through. It's 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 the boys the yeah. you know the the friendship the the camaraderie you know uh, the hanging out and, and 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 being able to joke around and have lighthearted conversations and not be so uptight or like oh my gosh who's going to take me 
right serious and put me to hr you know i mean we didn't have a, a hr you know the hr was the tree line the tree line yeah you, you know line. take your glasses off and hit the tree line you know <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, that was my hr man i i took a, a few uh uh bef- as a, i was a lance corporate i took a couple guys that were my roommates that got promoted before i did uh, me and me and w- one of the guys, we hated each other. Like we were roommates, but we hated each other. And when he when he picked up Corporal, he thought that was his free reign to do whatever the fuck he wanted to to me. And you, yeah. I'm like, bro, that that shit ain't gonna happen. Right. So we were we were in the field in Jacksonville and on, on Camp Lejeune, and he smarted off to me. I just took my blouse off. I said, let's go, and we walked like 200 yards away from where we were bivouacked at and we handled it. And after that, he was my friend after that, you know, but I, fuck it. I don't care if it, if you're going to disrespect me, I'm taking you to the tree line. It's definitely amazing to me, you know, how, how much throwing some hands helps out, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. It, it, as long as you get at the end, you have the boys and they're like, Hey, you guys handled it. And that's, you know, and that's enough. And that's it, a lot of times when you feel some another person's right yeah. hook or something across the jaw, you know, it, it might make you say, uh, I might not say nothing this time to that fool, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, I, I'm not saying that I didn't get my ass whooped because there's there are a few times I did get my ass whooped, but, um, but yeah, there's nothing like it. I mean, if somebody disrespects you, that's to me, that's the best way to handle it. Just go fight it out man to man. Screw the gun, screw the knife, just take your dukes, go out in the wood line and and handle your business. And then then get up, shake it off, go have a beer with them, and boom, you're good. It can be a little jailhouse, right? Like, you know, someone uh disrespects you or you know, punks you out in front of the crew, you gotta handle it. Oh, okay. right? or you're or you're gonna be that weak one of the group and you're going to get it all the time like oh he he, he's you know he's kind of (laughs) soft yeah yeah i imagine it's you know things are probably changed dramatically since you and i've been in bro oh yeah you know and in in the culture um i mean the marine corps is always going to be the way it's going to be to some degree you know um but i I bet you things have changed a lot and i mean I'm glad we didn't have video cameras, right? Like, oh yeah, oh yeah, within our units. <laughs> yeah, no, we. I still, you know, when I was in, I had the old, uh, uh, f- the flip phone, no video camera, you know, no, no smartphone. Um, but yeah, the the culture has changed uh, drastically, and um, my daughter's uh, archery coach, middle school archery coach, his son just went to boot camp. Literally, just went to boot camp. And uh, I was talking to dad, who's an army guy. Uh, so Rodney, he's an army guy. And I was like, hey, if you want to really mess with him, right on the outside of the envelope, don't don't put recruit, put private first class or something. To, you know, I said they will yeah. they will smoke him on the uh, on the quarter deck. I said they they will mess with him and, and just put have mom sp- uh, spray the uh, envelope with perfume. perfume. <laughs> <laughs> I said I said just do that. And there, she's like, "Well, can we send can we send pictures?" And I'm like, "Yeah, you just you can send a, you know, a few family pictures like that, but I said they they don't really want the marines to have that down there. They might be able to have one or two." Um I said, "But you you just want to keep it you need to have everybody send letters. Uh, and the reason I say that is because when you're in boot camp, sometimes those letters is what keeps you going. Oh, so golden. Golden. I think letters are pretty golden. You yeah. know, I, I think they are kind of what you need sometimes, right? Because you yeah. It's it's crazy how boot camp works in Marine Corps with you you're you're in there with like 50 to 60 guys, at least when I was going in, it was about that amount. And you don't say shit to them. You don't even talk to each other, rarely. But you're watching each other get smoked, and you're getting smoked with each other yeah. sometimes, too. You're on the quarter deck right next to this fool because he did something, and then you just happen to be that next. Uh, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get your body over. Um, but, you know, I, 
the Marine Corps has its way of doing things, right? And yeah, and, and, and kind of getting your getting your attention and knocking a chip off your shoulder if you kind of go in there with a chip on your shoulder. They kind of identify those people too, oh, yeah. like. And then you know, I think <clears throat> there was a little bit of me that was pushing back at first, and that's why I felt like the one drill instructor. He just any chance he got, bro, it was like I was on the quarter deck in smoke. I could be the fastest dude running by him and he's like why are you moving so slow get to the yeah. quarter deck you know yeah. like the... <laughs> yeah and, and you know the funny thing is is like uh my battle buddy in boot camp my quarter deck buddy uh sam d's gunner gunnery sergeant sam d's retired um uh, he you know he was my my battle buddy through boot camp we went to second battalion eighth marines together we did we we pretty much our first part of our career we were together and until i went to one eight and then i lost track of him uh and i, I ran into him uh, uh probably 10 years after i got out of the marine corps he was on recruiting duty here in kentucky and uh i talked to him then and then we lost track again because he got shipped off wherever he went uh, for wherever he went and, uh, um, and now we're friends again. Like we, we never lost, we never lost complete con uh, contact, but we did lose contact. Um, but now, you know, he's been on my show a few times and then, um, he's got a, he does the Mogadishu mile here at uh, Queens Lake farm up in, uh, up in Northern Kentucky. And, uh, which is super cool. It's, uh, that event is, is something uh, they take all these ROTC programs and then they bring some Rangers in. They bring all these different units and they're a four man team and they run this obstacle course. Uh, and then during the obstacle course, there's pictures of everybody that was lost during the bat the Operation Gothic Serpent. And before they change stations they have to you know read that person's name and everything about them that's on that little sheet dude it, it's so cool i, I did wow. uh i did a, I you that. know some interviews up there and it, it was cool to see you know all these different rotc programs and all these other different uh teams come do this thing and it, if you if you look up the mogodishu mile the, they have several different events throughout the country but this is the only one that has the four man team and they're running the the course like they do. And it's, it, it's, it's awesome that, you know, he could partner with uh, those guys. And, but Sam, Sam's amazing. If uh, I can get you connected with him because he's got a story, he got, you know, he was uh, medically retired because he got blown up by IEDs twice. Uh, and his story is just, it, it, it's, it's, it's amazing to, that he's still here to tell his story. Um, and I, I'm thankful for that. Cause like I said, he was, he was my, my boot camp buddy, my second battalion, eighth Marine buddy. And we've been friends th that long. So, and it's, that, that's a good thing about the Marine Corps is we build that, that camaraderie with our fellow soldiers or, or Marines. I don't want to say soldiers, but uh, fellow so uh, Marines and th those like la last a lifetime. So that's a hundred percent, bro. Uh, some of my best, I mean, my brothers pretty much are guys that I serve with. And I got lucky enough that we're, we're pretty close here in California that we could still go to barbecues and go to family gatherings with each other. And, um, and you know, just as a matter of fact, my, my one buddy, his father just passed away and, you know, we, me and my other buddy, we made it a point to make it out to him. He did the same for me when I lost my dad back in 2020. Nice. You know, we're always going to be here for each other at the end yeah. of the day, right? Like, you know, there's we get each other too. Yeah. You know, and that's the other hard part, man. Is there's not every not everybody gets us. Sometimes even our own family members don't get us. Yeah. But some of those people that we serve with and that we were, you know, intimately with day in day out know us better than some others and like you said but we can we can go years not talking and as yep. soon as we get back on in connection bro it's like we never it's left off never, and we get yeah. like straight idiots all over again you know yeah yeah and it, and it that does happen i mean um you know like i said when me and deeds reconnected this time i went up and um first time seeing him in person you know we we talked a few times on the phone uh but first time seeing him in person 
we we probably this is going to sound non macho, but as two Marines and two brothers, we we we, we hugged probably a good. 10 minutes when we first saw each other. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. It was just like, holy cow, you know. But no, it's uh, he's he's definitely my brother to the day I die. And uh, my, he knows that he can call me and he I know I can call him. And um, it, it's just uh, it's just amazing the bond that you build. And, you know, I, I had another guy that was uh, two years older than I was in, or one year older than I was in high school. And he went to the Marine Corps before I did. And he was with um, – Three eight, so he's third battalion, eighth Marines. Um, and so when I was at at two eight, um, his barracks was probably just just across the quad from where my barracks was. And uh, so we we would hang out on the weekends and stuff. And of course, we played football together from you know little league all the way to high school. He went a year before I did to the Marine Corps. So um, now after I got in, he he went to MSG. He went to msg and he was down in uh, mexico city at the embassy there and we lost track because of course we didn't have cell phones like we did like we do now but um, right. it was a lot anytime, harder to keep contact yeah so anytime we were you know anytime you know he was stateside we would hang out like if, especially if we run a 96 back home or whatnot uh because we grew up in the same town and and now you know we live maybe 15, 20 minutes of, apart from each other. And uh, we hang out all the time. And uh, of course, you know, I know his brother because his brother played football. I know his mom. I know, you know, his sister. I know pretty much the, the whole family and vice versa. And uh, my dad passed away back in August. And I had maybe six Marines show up to pay their respect that, that I served with or I have met over the course of the last 20 years. Uh, since I got out and uh, it's just, you know, veterans, I, I'm a preference this by saying veterans, first responders, uh, we have a brotherhood like no other, um, even though like, so if we go to a bar, say you, you say you're at a bar, I walk in and I, and we get to talk and you say you're a veteran. Well, guess what? Me and you're going to be hip to hip all night because we, <laughs> yeah. We know each other, and first, especially recovery. especially if it's Marine versus in Marine. Oh yeah, it's, oh, it's yeah. even worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and you know the police officers do that same thing. Absolutely. Firefighters do yeah. the same thing. EMTs, they all do the same thing. And you know, over the course of the twenty years that I've been uh, blessed to help my brothers and sisters, you know, whether it be volunteer and rebuilding the house or uh, out serving food to homeless veterans down, down in downtown Louisville or, or whatnot. And, and just to meet these people and see their uh, transition from being homeless to where they're at now. And there's, there's been some pretty good success stories. And then there's the ones that uh, succumb to their demons and right. it, it's hard. Um, demons you know i fight demons every day and i'm sure you do as well i mean yeah. our demons i tell my wife all the time she's she's like bro you need to slow down you're gonna you're gonna wind up hurting yourself and i'm like i can't slow down i said because idle minds and veterans don't mix if i sit idle too long my demons are gonna creep in and she's like i don't understand what you're saying i'm like bro you you probably will never understand what i'm going through right I said, I can, I can tell you, but I, I don't want to tell you because the shit that I seen when I was 18 years old, you don't want to know about. And she's, and I'll talk about more, but she, you know, she's found out more in the last year um, about some of the stuff that I've seen, some of the stuff that I've done because of my podcast that I have and, um, it, it, you know, she's like, well, you'll tell them, but you won't tell me. I was like, yeah, because I want to protect you and my kids from what I've seen. If I don't, you, you are the ones I will take a bullet for. You're the ones I'll die for. I don't need you to know what I've seen and what I've done. And I think she's slowly understanding that. Uh, so eh, who knows? And it's hard, bro. It, it's hard in so many ways because a, a lot of people don't understand. Right. And I think that's why, uh, veterans, we connect so well, and that's why police officers connect well with each other, and, and firefighters connect well with each other. It's because 
they get each other. They understand, right? Yeah. They've, they've, they've done something that, that a lot of people, less than 2% of the population can even attest for. <clears throat> I mean, it's even probably less than that, bro, because only there's about, probably about 2% of the population that actually swears in and wants to you know join. But even a less percentage of that will end up seeing combat at some point in time. Yeah. Right. Because not all the time when you when you join is there there's some conflict going on and you're gonna go off to war. <clears throat> yeah. When I joined in 2000, there wasn't nothing going on, right? Yeah. Boom. Real trade centers happened, and then not even then in 2001 did they ship us off until 2003. They're like, all right, now it's for real. Yeah. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> you know, something too about the camaraderie thing and, and, and get, you know, hanging out with each other is, is we kind of hold each other accountable in a, in a, in a really rough way, you know, like, you know, like we see each other like, damn fool, you're getting fat. Like, you know, yeah. like, yeah, you are too, bitch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, or the next, you know, the next time you see him freaking Jim bro, you know, like, Oh, Oh, now he's over here freaking flexing on us. And shit. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, you, it, it's just funny because it's like we all saw each other at a point, bro. We we're all on on our tip top shape, right? Yeah, and, and and then we were getting older and we're slowing down and stuff. And now we see each other getting the gray, yeah, the grays and the dad bod, and you know, it, but get us around each other. We sure as hell let each other know, you know. Oh yeah, we can leave with a complex real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's that banter that we can do back and forth now here's the thing marines we banter you know differently with other marines than we do with sure. other branches yeah but, but i can banter with an army guy i can banter with the navy guy i can banter with a coast guard guy but let some civilian jack off decide that he's going to try to jump in there and banter back and forth that's not going to end well for that person <laughs> uh, and and it hasn't ended well for some civilians so right but no, yeah, it's, it's, you know, that's, I can say, you know, ultimately, you know, the, the bond that we have as veterans, um, it, it there's nothing like it. Uh, and, you know, I, I'll give police officers and firefighters and, and EMTs their credit where credit is due because they see their own PTS, um, and they deal with their own struggles, but in the military, especially the Marine Corps, when they break you down and they rebuild you into the Marine that you're going to turn out to be, um, that just instills something into you for the rest of your life. And I still, you know, to this day, I, I, I still live by, you know, my, my, my values, my core, my core values. And uh, my wife is sometimes she's like, bro, you need to chill out on your shit. And I'm like, no, it's just <laughs> who I am. I can't, you know, um, like, you know, my wife's like, that's 20 years ago. I was like, no, it's forever. Yeah. It's my, <laughs> I tell my wife all the time. My oath never ends. And right. Uh, no, it doesn't. That's like coming here for this show. I was at, I was on at six 30, my time, which is 30 minutes prior because I'm a Marine. I like to be early. And like when, my wife, I get so mad at my wife and kids because on Sunday when we go to church, um, I want to be, I so church is eleven fifteen. I want to be, I want to be in the church parking lot at ten forty five. So that way, when they're walking out, I'm walking in and I, I can get the seat that I want. Uh, yeah, you're I, fifteen minutes to the fifteen minutes yes, early. Yes, <laughs> yes, always. And my wife gets so mad at me. I'm like, bro, and I start, I, I, I get anxious if i'm not leaving my door at 10 45 or, or 10 10 40 to get to church so it's just three minutes down the street uh to be there you know it's just like we gotta go we gotta go we gotta go we gotta go and it's, oh well because there's no there's no allowed being late in the yes. Marine Corps, like bro like you <laughs> that's why they say 15 minutes early you're late pretty much yeah yep. you know like <laughs> because there's not such a thing as being late. You don't want to be late. No, you don't. There's, there's, you don't. there's never a great outcome of uh, showing up late. Like, you, yeah, go ahead, be that guy. Yeah, be that guy that's that's. Uh, you could 14. be on a weekend duty or something. You could be, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, no, it's still that hurry up and wait mentality. Uh, even 20 years later, it's still, and, and I hate it. There's a lot of things that are hard to kick. Yes. You know, right, bro? We're like, we got wired a certain way. Yeah. And it's like, I, I you know, my kids and everybody, they kind of had, you know, went a little bit through discipline, through pain sometimes. Right? Yep. Like, you know, uh, it, it was hard. And, and I still have a lot of, you know, 20 years later, bro, I'm still. You know, I still have a lot of marine isms. Oh, yeah. You're never going to really kick for me. No, you'll never you'll never get rid of them. And, you know, I, I, I didn't push my kids. So my I, I got two daughters. Uh, one's 17 and one is 15, getting ready to be 16. Um, my wife wanted me to push them away from the military. She, like, she doesn't, she didn't want them to join the military. And I'm like, I'm never going to tell my kid that, I don't want them to go in the military. I can right. steer them. I can steer them in a direction that's going to be best suited for them when they get out of the military, you know, from learning from my experience. Cause being sure. an infantry, being an infantry guy, in, infantry guy, um, I was, I wasn't set up to, uh, when I transitioned out, you know, because my job, skill, job. yeah, right. my, my job skill pretty much elated to, being a police weapons, officer, put together weapons in, yeah, yeah or, or yeah. killing motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now my daughter, my oldest daughter, who um, is a straight straight A student, she's uh, taking college classes as a junior. She she took college classes okay. as a sophomore. So nice. she's she's in the law enforcement um, uh, career path for school. So she's taking criminal justice and she's doing all this crime scene investigations and stuff like this in high school. And her ultimate goal is she wants to be an FBI agent is her ultimate goal. So I told her, I said, this is what you need to do. I said, you need to talk to an air force recruiter. I said, because a lot of your FBI agents are recruited from the air force. I said, you need to talk to an air force recruiter Go to college, get your degree in sociology or something, not criminal justice, because they're not looking for criminal justice. They're they're looking for a degree other than uh, criminal justice. So sociology, accounting, you name it, uh, cyber, cyber, uh, cyber, whatever, cyber security. I said, that's what they're looking for. Uh, If you want to be a field agent, that's what you want to do. So. She's she's actually in the process of talking with an Air Force recruiter. Just had an Army guy text my wife out of the blue, like, "Hey, your daughter's a straight A student." Uh, she, you know, and basically saying that he can help her, you know, get where she wants to go. And um, I'm like, "No, you want to go Air Force. That's that's your path. You want to go. This is going to be your best option." I said, "Go. You need a Air Force ROTC. She wants to go to Eastern yeah. Kentucky University." I said, "You need to sign up for." Uh, the air force uh, rotc through eku you can get this they pay for your they could they'll, they'll give you a scholarship um and then with her grade she's going to get some scholarships you know with keys money and stuff like that and so what i'm hoping is she can go to the air force go to college first go in as an officer and then she can do her career there and then hopefully she can go in and be an fbi agent is what she wants to do and then my youngest uh, is 15 she's getting ready to be 16 so she's getting ready to be a junior um she wants to be a combat medic where this come mm-hmm. from i don't know uh, but she wants to be a combat medic she wants to be with marines and i'm like eh, if you want to do that you'd have to go in the navy become a mm-hmm. corpsman greenside corpsman that way you'd be with marines i said but but there's no all, guarantee either right i said but the army if you go in the army as a combat medic you you'll, you'll, you'll be good to go. Right. But she wants her ultimate end goal. She wants to be a high school history teacher. Mm. So I'm like, okay, so you still, here's what you need to do. You need to go in to go in the army, but you want to go to college first, get your degree while you're going to college, but you're already in the military. So you're, mm-hmm. you're going to become an officer. Um, and do your do your four year degree or however long because she's going to be taking the teaching career path. If she gets done with that. She's you know she's already doing her one week in a month and and two weeks out of the, the summer because she's technically in the army because she's going to college and through the program. And then when she gets done with college, 
she goes and finishes her four years of active duty service or enlistment as an officer. And then she can go from there and go into school teaching somewhere. Uh, she wants to move to Omaha, Nebraska. Why? I do not know. Cause there's nothing in Omaha. But no, cool. and I could say that I've, I've never really been there until I went to hero stock and I found out. Yeah. There's corn. corn yeah. There's corn. Yeah. Corn yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing in Omaha, but that's where there's she's Walmart. To yeah, that's where she wants to move. And I'm like, bro, okay. Well, right. I'm like, do it, do it, rock it, rock it, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's awesome. I mean, my daughter, um, she's in college now. She's on her second year. She goes to UC San Diego. Um, and she's actually contemplating and, and going in the military, right? You know, and it, it kind of shocks me knowing that, she, you know, what she knows and, Kind of growing up with me as her dad, you know, in the right. War. But hearing her talk about it, you know, I don't, I don't ever try to discourage her. It's her life. It's it's what she wants to do, and ultimately, it's going to be her choice. You know, if anything, I can only recommend or give her what my experiences were, which <clears throat> that's twenty years ago. Things are different yep. than how things are now. Uh, but you know, we always need people that are going to join. We always need that those people that are going to go and do it, you yeah. know, they just, I think that my best thing for anybody that wants to join, go in with a plan. Yeah. Go in with a plan. Right. Cause you're going to get out. Yep. And unless you have some plan of going full 20 years, which I even know guys that planned on going 20 years and then not work out for them, you know, and they have to stop at eight or 10, yeah. you know? So, um, you just never know. I, I think just for the young folk, if you want to join, you know, you just got to make sure you got yourself a good plan. Go in there knowing like, hey, when I get out, I'm going to I'm going to be able to do this job or I'm going to be able to have this job, you know? Yeah, because that's that's the one thing I think that a lot of veterans start to struggle with. They get out and their 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 jobs, what they were doing was some high level shit. But not in the civilian world. Right. right, like it yeah. doesn't equate. They're like, oh wow. You, well, a uh, lot of times, a lot of times, veterans lose that sense of purpose when, when right. we get out, yeah. when we get out of the military, and a lot of times that's what causes um, uh, the demons to creep in, is because when we get out, we lose the camaraderie, and then right. we lose that sense of purpose, um, and and then that's not good, and that's where uh, you have to get involved. Uh, whether it be a, a American Legion or a VFW or um, something of that nature, or, or a veteran service organization that's local to your area. Uh, so for me, when I got out in 2004, uh, I got involved with a lot of different uh, volunteering with a lot of different veteran service organizations. Um, like I volunteered for Operation Victory, and what uh, Operation Victory is is a, a bunch of um, labor unions. Uh, so I'm with uh, AT, so I'm with Communication Workers of America. I work for AT and T. Uh, that's what I do now for a living, uh, and all these different you know seventy five different organizations uh, come together and created Operation Victory. And what Operation Victory does is they go in and find a dilapidated home in, in Louisville. Uh, they buy that house, whether they get it for free or they get it for $10,000. And then what we do as a labor union, we come in there uh, and you got your plumbers, your electricians, your telecommunications, all these different labor unions come together. We go in and we demo this house all the way down to studs. And then we make sure the foundation's good. We make sure the studs are good. And then we rebuild this home. And then once that house is rebuilt, then then there's a vetting process for homeless veterans. Uh, they have to meet a certain criteria to, to, to get this house. And then if they are picked, then they get this house. Um, and they get to live in that house for as long as they want. After 10 years... If they decide to sell that house after 10 years, then they get to keep all the proceeds from selling that house. But if they sell it within that first 10 years, then they have to give uh, Operation Victory, I think, like $10,000, which is the original investment back. Uh, but everything after that, they get to keep. And 
so in Louisville, we have a lot of uh, first step programs. So like your uh, Volunteers of America, the Healing Place Salvation, Ar Salvation Army, and uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, there's another one. But what they do is like veterans that are dealing with PTS, drug addiction, alcohol addiction. Uh, they bring them in. And it's a 90-day program. And... Um, after that veteran's done with that program, then, you know, they, they go back to where they were, where, wherever they were living or whatever or not. Now, a lot of times these veterans are homeless veterans, so they fall back into the same rut. Uh, good thing about Operation Victory is if you're selected for this house, and I think they do like six or seven houses a year, then that veteran gets to go and live in that house uh, mortgage free for the first 10 years. Um, and wow. then, during that process, that veteran gets to work on themselves. So they, you know, they get to find help, you know, help finding a job, uh, help doing bank accounts and stuff like that. And that's, that helps that veteran get back up on their feet. And, you know, a, a lot of times homeless veterans, the only thing that we worry about is where our next meal co is coming from. Uh, so if you, if you have a house, now you know where your next meal is coming from because you're not, you're not living on the streets anymore. Uh, so that helps your mental, your mental aspect of things as well. And it, it's, it, it, like I said earlier in the, in the conversation is it's amazing to see the transition from being homeless to now being, uh, I don't, I don't want to use the word productive member of society, but they, they have been reintegrated into society now. And it, it's just, it, there's not another feeling like it when you know you're part of helping that veteran uh, get back up on their feet. Uh, that's that's an amazing feeling, and um, I, I love volunteering. I take my daughters with me. My my youngest daughter, she loves demo days when we go in and tear the houses down. She loves doing that and uh, going out and feeding the homeless veterans. And, you know, I partner with Mission Barbecue and they they give us sandwiches and we go out and we feed the homeless veterans and just sitting down <coughs> and hearing their stories. It, it's man, it, I tell you what, it, it's it's it, it's humbling sometimes, you know, because here I am. I'm you know, I've been on Marine Corps since 2004. I, I have a good job. I have a great wife, a great life. Um, I'm not struggling, you know, I don't need anything. I, I, I got everything that I need. And you got your, you know, brothers and sisters that are living on the streets that is struggling to make ends meet from day to day. And, um, when you can help somebody and help better their life and I don't give handouts, that's one thing I won't do. I'll give you a hand up, but I'm not going to give you a handout. Um, there's this one, I, I was uh, doing a thing at the, one of the uh, IBEW uh, union halls and on the off ramp from the expressway was a veteran. He was wearing a veteran hat um, and he said, his sign said, we'll work for food. Uh, I was, I was, so me and the other guy that was with me, um, we, we went past him because we had a meeting. As soon as we got done with that meeting, I was like, Hey, look, if that veteran's still there, let's, let's pick him up, take him, go get him some, you know, lunch because we were getting ready to go to lunch. And uh, he goes, all right, cool, let's do it. So I picked this guy up. You know, we, we talked to him for a few minutes. And then I was like, hey, are you hungry? He's like, yeah. I was like, all right, come talk and come come hang out with us. So we took him down and we got him. Uh, we went to Golden Crown and uh, we were sitting there just having a talk. So this guy was living in Oklahoma. He came in to visit family in Southern Kentucky. And when he came back, through to go back to Oklahoma. He was at the Greyhound bus stop, got mugged, and they took everything from him, his VA card, everything. So he was in the hospital. He gets out of the hospital, goes back towards the Greyhound bus station, get mugged again as soon as he leaves the, the hospital. Oh, so they put him in the VA hospital the second time. Uh, now, while he's there, you know, he's in the process of getting his VA card and all that good stuff back in order. And 
after the after he gets done with the VA hospital, they put him in St. Vincent de Paul. That's the other one, uh, which is a, a community for uh, veterans and, and homeless people, not just veterans, but just homeless people in general. But they have a veterans wing and, you know, he's he's out, you know, doing labor day jobs and uh, making ends meet. And, you know, me and him are talking, Mr. Farmer. I'm not going to give his first name, Mr. Farmer. And um, he's like, hey. I, I want to get an apartment here in Louisville. I don't want to go back to work Oklahoma in the VA home because he was in the VA home in Oklahoma. I don't know exactly which one, but um, he was in a, a VA home there, but he wanted to transfer from Oklahoma to Kentucky to be closer to his family. His son and daughter lived, I think near Bowling Green, Kentucky. And he's like, I just want to be close to them. So I helped him, you know, get everything that he needed so he could transfer from there to here and we wind up getting him, him an apartment and um, he's doing good now. I mean, he's, good, you know, he's, he's doing everything that he needs to do. And, um, but no, man, it's doing, doing that kind of, you know, working with VSOs and volunteering and stuff. If, if you haven't done it and you're listening to this, check them out. There's a bunch of great veteran service organizations out there and, um, uh, yeah, that, that that's why I do the podcast that I do, um, because there's a lot of veteran service organizations out there that people don't know about. Like you got the Hope Project down in in the in the Panhandle of Florida, which is retired chaplain David Trojden. He rescue rescues horses, and then in turn he does equine therapy for veterans and their families. Nice. Then you then you got Wayward Warrior Ranch in Bristol, Virginia. Um, Elton East is his, Elton East is his name, and he does um, horsemanship with veterans. So it's not equine therapy, but it is equine therapy because he's not a certified therapist. But in, if if you work with horses, you know that you and that horse become one, and there's just something about you know you and that horse feeding your energy feeding that horse and that horse's energy feeding you the healing aspect of that is amazing and um so but yeah so with the podcast man I, like i said i've i've reached to uh, people in california uh maine uh, virginia florida texas you name it there's just so, so many with the podcast let's start from the beginning like okay. kind of what like like kind of what got you going in the podcast world and you know what ended up making you i mean obviously when you got out and stuff you know probably all right we're trying so, to find yourself right and yeah so 2004 i got out of the marine corps um and I, I was doing a lot of different uh volunteer work with all these different veteran service organizations the the last organization that i was with um uh, i was on the board i actually served on the board on this one and I got screwed over by the founder. Uh, so I was in the process. So I run AT&T Veterans for the state of Kentucky, which is a um, uh, national 501c3. So they have a chapter in Kentucky. I'm the president of that. And then with my local union, uh, we do the Operation Victory. Well, I started seeing um, the the tiny home communities that were built in like St. Louis and, and Las Vegas and uh, other areas. And I'm like, well, we need that here in Kentucky. So me and Eugene Spear, who's a puddle pirate, and a, he's a Coast Guard guy, uh, I was like, hey, let's let's start this. Let's 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 do this here in Kentucky. Let's get something together. So me and him started working, uh, talking. You know, we talked with Miss America 2000, Heather French Henry. We talked with Metro United Way, and we started making all these connections with. Um, uh, retired Colonel Benj Benjamin Adams, who was the uh, commissioner of Kentucky Department of Veterans Affairs. And we started making all these connections and everybody was coming on board. And I made a post. I made a post about uh, looking for land that could be donated, that somebody would be willing to donate so we could build a tiny home community for homeless veterans here in, in my city. Um during this process, I was reaching out to all these different local veteran service organizations. I was like, hey, this is what we got going on. Would you be willing to help volunteer, whatever? Uh, so I reached out to a few of them. Um, I got yes for, from a lot of them. And then one organization um, said, we can't, we're not built for that. 
but we can volunteer. I was like, all right, cool. If you're not, if you're not built to help, that's fine. You can volunteer when we, when we start building these things. And, um, so during that process, um, I joined said organization as a member. Um, and then I got, um, somebody asked me to join the board as Sergeant Arms. I was like, all right, cool. I'll, I'll join the board because what you guys are doing are amazing because they're nationally recognized for equine therapy. Uh, and then they had some other programs, uh, uh, you know, they had a bullets and barbecue program, coffee and camaraderie program, and uh, they were doing amazing things. Uh, so I was like, all right, cool. So I joined the board and the founder's like, hey, are you still doing that tiny home project? I was like, yeah, I'm still doing it. He goes, well, what do you think about bringing it over from AT&T Veterans and bringing it over here and making it our thing? That should have been key, number one. Light bulb <laughs> should have went off, but I, I was I was blinded uh, by everything else that was going on that was great. And I was like, all right, that's cool. Let's do it. Let's bring it over. At that time, we just had five acres of land donated to us. So I had a realtor or a, a, not a realtor, but a, yeah, I had a realtor reach out to me that he had a developer that had five acres of land that he wanted to donate to a veteran for this project. I was like, all right, man, that's cool. Let's do it. Nice. So, so we, we start, uh, it, it takes off like wildfire. I mean, we got, we got Luckett and Farley coming in, Luckett and Farley's designing, designed the whole layout for us. Uh, they um, did the, you know, the, the layout of the way the houses we were using shipping containers too. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty cool. So quad cons, uh, 40 foot, 40 foot shipping containers. Uh, some of them had camelbacks on top. So they had the 20 footer on top. Uh, but they were all ADA compliance. We had a convent, uh, community center. We had a chapel on site. We had a business park where we were going to bring in uh, uh, the VA hospital was going to come in. They were going to do free medical screenings. We had a bank that was going to come in and teach veterans how to uh, budget and everything. We had chefs that was going to come in and teach veterans how to cook on a budget. We, we had this, this thing was Absolutely. set up and it was an 18 yeah. month program. I mean, we had it set up. Well, said founder slowly started pushing me out, out of the meetings. Like, and then he would like berate me and say, well, why didn't you show up? I'm like, well, cause you never told me about the meeting. So he slowly started pushing me out because he wanted the uh, recognition for himself. And um, so needless to say, there's a, a few other factors that, factor in but I, I did wind up resigning um and when i resigned i was like well i'm gonna start a podcast um and i'm a i'm a bit of a procrastinator um so <laughs> covid ha you know covid happened and everything and um i bought the mics i bought the computer i bought everything that i needed and i had it all set up down here in the basement in the bunker and i didn't do anything with it didn't do anything with it and i was like man so I started doing research on all the different vet, veteran podcasters that are out there and what they were talking about. And what I noticed was nobody was talking about veteran service organizations from around, you know, just in general, just veteran service organizations. Every, every now and then you would see one where a, a service organization would come on, but they mainly talked about the story of that veteran, not why they, you know, why they're doing what they're doing. Uh, so for me, when I finally decided to pick up the mantle and, and start doing this, um, I was like, all right, we're going to focus on veteran service organizations from around the country. And there's, there's a plethora, a plethora of veteran service organizations. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. so, so what I had to do is do a deep dive on each one of these organizations. You got to go online. You got to look at their 1090s. You got to go online, look at the Google reviews. You got to go online, make sure that, you know, they're doing it for the right reason. And what we focus on is the grassroots ones, the, the mom and pop ones that are still focusing on the veteran and not the number. They're uh, still a little more intimate. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and, they, and they're willing to work with other veteran service organizations because here's the key. You can have a great veteran service organization, but if, if your organization doesn't work for me, then I need to go somewhere else. And that's where that veteran service organization needs to, all right, what, what's going to work for you? 
Is it going to be uh, Warriors to Racing where they do uh, racing, endurance racing with cars? Or is it going to be equine therapy with uh, David Trotchton down in uh, uh, Hope Project in the Panhandle? Or is it going to be with Nicholas Ron and Warriors Next Adventure where they take you out hiking, they take you out Jeep therapy, they do, you know, all these other things? Or, or, or is it um, a fishing adventure in Alaska with Kentucky Wounded Heroes? Uh, so th that's where these organizations need to work together because what works for me might not work for you. Right. So that's why, well, that's it's why it's definitely I not a one shoe fits everyone type of yeah. situation. Yeah. And, and that's the good thing about this podcast. And, and we've had a lot of, um, a lot of good reviews because people are like, Oh, I didn't know that that was there in my area. Uh, like in Texas, you got Project Zero with Cal Shutick and his team, and um, what they do out there, and uh, or or Wayward Warrior Ranch. I, I know I said him earlier, but uh, Elton East uh, in Bristol, Virginia, or um, X Two down in Florida. They take they take veterans fishing, and and he does X Two. What he does is he goes fishing because he's you know that's what his therapy, and he's like, well. I might as well start a, a 501 C3 and take veterans with me because I'm already going fishing. And, you know, he, he does everything out of his own pocket. Like he, all the money that he puts into his organization is out of his own pocket. He's like, sure. well, I'm going, I'm going fishing anyway. Why not? Why not funnel my money? Yeah, that's a couple of fishing buddies too. Yeah. 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 So, but no, man, I, I love podcasting. Uh, you know, we do it. Uh, we started out one, one a week uh, on Sunday. It was audio only. And then now we do two a week. We do Sundays and Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we're on Facebook Live. We're on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. We're on our LinkedIn page as well. Uh, so, yeah, man, I, it's, it's, it's just grown. And I'm not looking to I, – I don't, I don't advertise. Like, I don't sponsor ads. I don't uh, – <coughs> every now and then you'll see <coughs> – every now and then you'll see it like an opus clip or a reel or something like that. But all of mine is organic sure. because it's, it's word of mouth. And yeah. that means I'm doing it for the right reason because I'm not looking to get famous off of it. What I'm looking to do right. is help my brothers and sisters out there that live in Texas or live in Maine or live in California or Washington state. And it, that's 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 what we do and i i have a co-host with me uh, candace is my co-host um she's not a veteran but she is a veteran advocate she has been for the last 20 years um and that's why we do what we do is because or why we do what we do is because we have a passion for it and we have a servant's heart and we want to make sure that that 22 a day is zero a day because one is too many so now uh, you guys started uh, last year. Yeah, we started February twenty or so February twenty eighth of last year was our first episode that we published. And uh, right. like I said, we've we've been we've been pounding away, man. Yeah, so you know when you started, bro, like, did you know much about podcasting? I mean, you had gotten equipment, right? You, a couple of years back, thought about it. So you kind of, I guess, had some kind of inclination about podcasting, but did you have any idea of what you were getting yourself into? No, I had, I had no clue. Um, now, I, I've always been very computer savvy, um, but I had no clue what I was getting into. And <laughs> and and the demand, honestly, that um, I, I work a full-time job. So um, I work from 7 o'clock in the morning, my time, Eastern, to three, four o'clock in the afternoon. And, you know, I, I have a, I have a wife and kids at home and I, I didn't understand. Uh, so I have an addictive personality. My wife will tell you, because like, if I'm playing a video <laughs> game, I get addicted to it. And I, it's like, I got to sure. play it all the time. And my yeah. wife has told me that this podcast, I, it, for me, it's therapy because, it, it, you know, I, I'm, I'm helping brother my brothers and sisters out there and I'm also helping myself. So some people would say it's selfish, but it's selfish for a good reason because I'm doing it for therapy for myself, but I'm also in turn helping, you know, my brothers and sisters out there. And that's, 
for me, that's that it'll never get it'll never do away with my demons. It'll help minimize them. Like my night terrors, you know, if I'm not doing the podcast and I take a break. So like last year, we took a break uh, right before Christmas and we went all the way up to New Year. And we didn't we had shows that were already pre-recorded, but I, I didn't have anything to do. Like I was just uh, like, uh, you know, my nerves were shot. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I need to get back in the studio. And, I need another show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know, and, and I'm always, I'm always on the phone. Like my wife will tell you, my my phone is nonstop right now. It's on silent, and I've got 22 missed calls already. And I'm like, bro. And I'm like, oh man. But no, but. I'll get back to them as soon as I'm off of here and I'll, I'll respond to the ones. Some of them are spam. So I'm, uh, I'm only probably missing about 10 that I need to call back. But um, yeah, man, no, I, I didn't know anything about podcasting. Uh, we started out doing audio only uh, one a week. Um, and I noticed that, that, you know, the, the trend was picking up and people were, were, you know, tuning in and watching. And I mean, hell I've, I've had people on, Every continent except for Africa listen to the show. Uh, I got people that listen regularly in the United Kingdom. I got people that ris- listen regularly in the Philippines. Uh, I got people that listen regularly in Brazil and um, North America, sure, because that's where I live at and that's where we live at. But um, they pretty much every, everywhere except for Africa, you know, people are listening. And um, the connections that I've made over that course of that year – um, some of, you know, like Misfit Nation, Rich LaMonica, he, he's the one that got me to move from audio only to video. He helped me, you know, he's like, Hey, you need to check out StreamYard, Um, and this is what you need to do. And then, uh, I met the triple threat vets guys, uh, out of, you know, three of them are in Texas and Houston. One is in Florida, uh, three, three Navy guys, one army guy, great bunch of guys. They are amazing. Um, then you got um, Adam Bird with Heroes Media Group. I met him uh, and Homefront Sit Rep as of February 28th of this year. Homefront Sit Rep is now a part of Heroes Media Group. Um, and what Adam Bird does for veterans with his his brand, he helps veterans uh, with podcast production, uh, promotion. They, um, If you're a veteran, you wrote a book, he'll help you get it published. If it's already published and you want it into an audio book, he'll help you do that. Um, if if I want to go to a veteran event, say I want to go to the Marine Corps Marathon, I can call Adam up a month beforehand before the event and say, hey, I want to go to Boston for the Marine Corps Marathon. Can you get me a, a press pass? He'll get me a press pass for it. Uh, that's part of being the in, in the media group, the Heroes Media Group. Um, then you got... Uh, Dexter Pitts, he's a uh, army army retired. And then he was a local police officer. He also wrote a book. Um, and then conversations with the vet and all these other veteran podcasters. You got you and and Travis and um, what we do with this collective of podcasters at the end of the month, the last Wednesday of every month, we have our tip of the spear veterans roundtable, And what we do is we, we just come on there and we talk about current events that are going on globally. We talk about current events within the veteran and military community. Uh, and then we talk about events and, and guests that we've had on our show, like that hat you're wearing guitars for vets. Um, this Monday, Groove and Tom is coming on my show oh, and he's going to talk man. about, and he's going to talk about guitars for vets. And um, I, it, it it's it's amazing the people that you meet doing a podcast. So it's it's it, and it's it, like I said, I'm not looking at I'm not looking to get rich. I'm not looking to get famous. The way I look at it, if I can make enough money to, for my podcast to pay for itself, so I don't have to pay for it out of pocket and hear my wife yell at me because I'm spending money on the podcast. <laughs> I'm <good>. right. <laughs> uh, but now, not saying that if. If I don't, if I, if say this podcast takes off and it's making a hundred thousand dollars a year, well, that money I'm going to donate to a veteran service organization. That's my plan. Uh, that's like this shirt. I don't know if you see it back here. It says Marine it down. If you go to same flag, same that shirts listed on there, 
That's a co-branded shirt from Homefront Sit Rep and Got Your Six Culture. At the end of the year, at all the sales, I'm going to get a check for 25% of all sales. What me and my co-host has decided to do is we're going to put all the local uh, 501c3s here in Kentucky for the first year. We're going to put them all together and we're going to put them on a randomizer and whoever it lands on, that's who that check's going to. So we're going to donate that's all great, the money to them. So, Damn, yeah. man. Uh, that's exactly what I have envisioned for myself in my podcast as well is eventually, you know, if, you know, donations, sponsors and stuff like that, never, it's never really to make money. And like you said, if anything, it would be to pay to keep playing. Yeah. Um, that would be my only thing. But other than that, I would love to donate to those 501Cs that are out there, the mom paws, the ones out there that are really putting, making an impact in veterans' lives, you yeah. know, and, and and you can see it a lot of times just by going to their websites and seeing the testimonials and stuff like that. Um, you know, it, I, I love this, the whole podcast thing, the way it's going. And, and, and I think, it's 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 slowly but surely definitely creeping in the veteran world and a lot more veterans are popping up with with pop yeah because i think that we're watching each other right and we're like man this you know this looks like something i would love to do and then you see the conversations that they're having yeah and then you, you start to relate to the conversation and you almost find yourself wanting to engage in the conversation with them yeah you know so it is it it is amazing to think what one podcast can do to a, a human being, right? Like, there's different branches of it, right? Like, you got the personal side of it, which is you know like your personal growth, your personal goals, things like that, and then there's the community side of it, where you can build a community, yeah. and you can all kind of join forces and try to go for it and, and, and we all want to i think at the end of the day man you know in the podcast where we become like cheerleaders for our brothers and sisters we yep. want them to do great and we want to help them do great and and when every time you hear someone out there is you know getting signed a record deal or they're you know they're the next big thing in our veteran world, bro, it's it, it, it's great, and we're just like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, um, because it is hard to hear the stories of the guys that take their lives, yeah, or the it guys is. and gals, you know, the ones that just feel like they don't have a purpose or think that no one out there cares because it's crazy. I, yeah. I don't even I don't even have to know their name or whatever, but when I hear of it alone, it does something. Yeah, I, I, right. I'm right. There, I'm right there with you. I, you know, I, one of one of the shows that I watch, uh, pretty much every, every Thursday when they come on, is Triple Threat Vets, and and the reason I watch those guys is because they're so relatable. Um, and you know, Ty, he's from Kentucky, so that's kind of our connection there. Right. And then the first person I talked to was Matt. He was the first guy I talked to, senior chief. And me and him, you know, we connected kind of right off the bat because we're uh, so like-minded. And and then you got Al, who's down in Florida, who is just uh, off the wall, batshit kind of crazy kind of guy. <laughs> and then you got Scott, DJ, DJ Royalty, that, you know, it, they're just a, a great mesh of personalities. And then, you know, they bring on guests on their show and um, they're kind of like me. They're a lot, of, but everybody they come on their show are, are veterans and every now and then they might have a ra random non-veteran, but these guys, you know, they, they, it, it's, they're just so relatable and I cheer them on. And then like Rich with Misfit Nation, uh, he's just so relatable and well, I get on. And so Thursday nights is a ritual in our house that we, we sit in the living room and we turn on triple threat vets when they come on. And then, you know, I got my phone on Facebook and then my, my TV's on YouTube. Uh, so the YouTube is li linked into the home front sit rep page. And what I do is I won't comment. I'll comment uh, at the beginning, but when I first start, I'll say, 
hey, hey guys, ho hopefully it's a great show. And then that's the only thing I comment from Home Front Sit Rep because I don't want to take away from their podcast. Because sure. so I go to my Facebook and I'll text from my personal profile, and you know, it, it's a family in the chat, you know. So you got the three, the four guys on the show, plus their guest, and then you got the, the people that are in the chat that makes the podcast better because if you got somebody, you know, if you got a group of people that are chatting that watch you regularly and they're interacting with your guests during this whole thing, um, it, 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 it just makes it flow a little bit easier sometimes because you, you got the interaction from the, the, the host, you got the interaction right. from the, 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 the guest on the show, and then you got interaction from the chat and, I always tell them, you know, cause they got some haters that come in chat and I'm like, bro, that those are the best. When you got trolls, internet trolls that want to come in and start, start sh shit in your chat that, that makes even better because then you got your people in chat that are defending you. And then, you know, it's just funny. Like when we, so the last tip of the spear that we did, uh, we had some guy, um, he said he's from, um, I, I, he, maybe he was Chinese. He said he wasn't American, but he's like all American soldiers, military are cowards. You know, he put that in chat. <laughs> now here's my thing. I fought for his right to say that just like you did. And just like all the other veterans that are going to be watching the show, we fought for his right to say that. So it didn't upset me. I thought it was funny. I'm like, all right, cool. That's your opinion. I disagree with it, but, you got an opinion and you know, the old saying, everybody's got one and they stink. Um, right. And, you know, it's just funny that, you know, but I, I'm like you, I cheer all my, my brothers and sisters on um, like your show. I, I, if I see you, if I sit pop on, I'll, I'll share it or Travis's show. I'll share it. Miss nation, triple threat. Uh, the oath we took. Uh, conversations with a vet. Uh, I am Pitts, the Decision Hour, and all these other veteran podcasters that I follow. Um, I'll share them. Out, you know, I'll go in and I'll comment. Hey, how's it going? And I'll listen uh, five ten minutes, and then my phone rings, and I got to jump off. But um, it, it, you know, it, I, I love it, dude. And uh, there's something about doing live podcasting and and interacting with the chat and and you know, having your guest on live as well. It's just, I don't know, man. It's just something therapeutic about it that I just love it, man. And, you know, growing organically, because like, you know, you got all these spammers out there that, hey, do you want to promote your YouTube, uh, your YouTube channel? Yeah. Like I'm in several like podcast groups on Facebook. That's and, all just a scam. Every one of them. Oh yeah. Every time I comment, it's like, now I've made some connections in there, Stay like, here. but most of the time it's the alphabet soup, you know, Hey, do you want to promote? Do you want to promote? And now they're hitting right. me up on LinkedIn too. And I'm like, bro, LinkedIn is for professionals, not scammers. And I'm like, ah, uh. but no, I've made some great, you know, over the course, over the course of the year, uh, I've made, met some great people. Hell, I just went to Texas and hung out with Matt and his wife, Becky for a week. The wife and I, on a Saturday night, uh, we decided to plan a trip to Texas for for the week. And we were going out to go see um, the Houston Rodeo. We got to see uh, Jelly Row in concert at the Houston Rodeo. And then afterwards, we went and seen our buddy Bubba Wesley. Uh, we had all access to Bubba Wesley after, you know, after show. And uh, working uh, with Jason from Hero Stock, um, I'm trying to get a uh hero stock concert in kentucky next year uh so i think that's going to be super cool i want to do a, a two-day festival a friday and a saturday night and uh you know mike ponder scotty hasting uh bubba yeah. wesley and all these people that are independent artists and some of them are not independent they're signed with labels but you know they're like bubba's not a veteran but he's got family members that are our veterans so he's a veteran supporter and he loves uh doing things with veterans and then like scotty hasting mike ponder and all these guys that are our veterans um that um are, are in the music industry i'm trying to get all these guys together for the concert here in kentucky uh, i think that'll be amazing um 
this year, July 25th through the 30th, we're bringing in the Vietnam Traveling Wall and Cost of Freedom tribute to Shepherdsville, Kentucky. So if you live close by, um, July 25th through the 30th in Shepherdsville at the Shepherdsville Park, we will have the Vietnam Traveling Wall and Cost of Freedom tribute. Um, and then we'll have, so Friday night and Saturday night, we're going to have live music with veteran bands and stuff like that. Um, and we've had some feedback that it shouldn't be a festival and the way we look at it. It's not a festival. It's a celebration of, of their sacrifice. And we found, so there was two veterans that were KIA in Vietnam, one from Shepherdsville, one from Mount Washington. We found the family members of the, those veterans and we're bringing them to the wall and we're going to have a celebration and, and, and celebrate that family uh, because their son or daughter or husband uh, paid the ultimate sacrifice. And uh, we got to keep saying their names. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We got to keep saying their names because that's the only way to keep their memory alive. And, Absolutely. you know, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, you shouldn't have live music there. We're going to we're going to be we found bands that play uh, uh, Vietnam era music. And that's what we got coming in. And we're going to keep it, you know, like it's going to be a time we start, a time we end. That's just going to be a celebration of of the lives of everybody that was lost. Um, and, you know, it's just one of those things. And then uh, in November, we have our uh, third annual veteran and su uh, veteran and first responder suicide awareness concert. Uh, it would be 12 hours of music. So it starts at 11 a.m., goes to 11 p.m. Uh, we got veteran food trucks and veteran vendors that are come set up all that money that we raised from that 100% of that goes to camp hero, Kentucky this year, last year, oh, we went to nice. dog up in hero. Um, so we, we, as we're putting this on, we, we have no, we, we take no money in all of the hundred percent of the proceeds go to, um, to the organization uh, that we decided to go with this year. Um, and then this year we're doing corporate sponsors for that. And, um, you know, people are like, well, what are you going to use the corporate sponsors for? I'm like, well, that money that we raise from corporate sponsors is going to the organization. Now, granted, we're doing it in an amphitheater. So we have to pay for security and we got to pay for, uh, 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 somebody to do the trash and stuff like that afterwards. But all anything that is not covered by, any, anything that's left over is, is going straight to the organization. So we're not taking as the organize, 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 yeah, can't even talk today. Uh, yeah, the, you, you need some more red crayons. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I have to reach down in the bag and grab some as the organizers. There we go. As the organ, organizers, we're not taking one penny from it. And uh, nice. So it, it's, it's, I think this one's going to be our biggest one yet. Cause we got some big headliners coming in. Um, and Bubba Wesley is going to come in. He's doing it for free. He's not charging us to come in and do the show for us for an hour. Um, but we have some other people that are coming in. Uh, I think Mike Ponder's coming in for our uh, July 20, uh, the veteran uh, Vietnam Wall. Um, and then uh, I think Mr. JT Cooper, I don't know if you know who he is, but he's the founder of Warrior Rounds. Um, so JT Cooper, um, had had a promising music career he gave up his music career and joined uh in the army he was in the 10th mountain uh 10th mountain division he was over in somalia during operation gothic serpent black hawk down um and now what he does is he created an organization called warrior rounds and what warrior rounds does is they take veterans pairs them with uh, Grammy award winning singer songwriters and they write. Um, so they get them together and they're talking and telling their story. And during that process, they're writing a song about that veteran's life. Uh, and then after they're done doing that process, um, they, they, the singer songwriter goes and does their thing with the song a month later they go to the hard rock cafe down in Nashville, Tennessee, and they release that song. Oh, and, and I'm telling you, if you go to warriorrounds.com and you go look at the, the, the songs over there, make sure you have tissues. 
because one of those, huh? Oh, it's one of those. And it's 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 man, I tell you what, everybody knows that there's when when it comes to healing, uh, you got music therapy, you got e uh outdoor therapy, uh, then you got equine therapy, and then there's the other ones, but your your adrenaline therapy as well. So Warriors to Racer is another good program if you haven't checked out Ed McLean and Heard what that. he's yep what Ed McLean and Warriors Racers do it, it's it's you know these these therapies out there that you don't have to pay for I, I mean hell if you're if you want to just go sit out in the woods and watch nature wake up that that is freaking amazing because I tell you what I love going out opening day of deer season sitting out in the woods getting out there at six zero six in the morning and just watch nature wake up it's dude it's so refreshing it recharges your batteries um if if you're allergic to outdoors look up equine therapy um music therapy there's several things out there. i mean guitars for vets is another good organization that uh it, just the learning how to play guitar and having that music music fills the soul i mean Depending on what mood I'm in, I listen. I listen to all genres of music, and depending on what mood, I, mood I'm in, is what music I'm listening to. If I'm in a pissed off mood, I'm listening to '90s grunge. <laughs> music, yeah, music is definitely. And there's also uh, "Ruck It Up" for Warriors. Hey, I got if Scott. You want, if you ever want to go ruck it up, go ruck it up too. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. so I got the uh, Scott Frendenberg, who's the founder of "Ruck It Up for Warriors." Yeah, uh, Scott's a good guy. I got him slated to come on my show, and um, I, I will tell you, um, I, I'm a busy little bee uh, because I am booked right now. I think I'm booked all the way through June, um, July, then July starting to fill up. And I mean, l listen to some of these that I got coming up. So May 5th, I got Hero Stock. Um, May 6th, I got She's the Veteran out of South Carolina. So after you have Hero Stock, you are official. Official? Podcast. You're an official podcast after you get Steiner on. Dude, it's been on like 40 podcasts, bro. Nice, nice. Yeah, he's, All right. He's so, a podcast or <laughs> Mother's Day, I don't have an episode. I'm not doing anything on Mother's Day. Um, so Guitars with Vets on the 13th. I thought they were. What's the day? Today's the first. Um, so they're uh, so they're on the thirteenth. Uh, guitars for Vets, Groove and Tom. Um, then I got Veteran Hundo Club. If you never heard of them, those guys they're doing amazing things in the veteran community. Um, they're so five years in the making to to make Veterans Hundo Club. Uh, and what they did is they started researching everything that they needed to do to bring in lawyers, to bring in um, people to help write books. And uh, it's a collective of all these different uh, veterans in the world, podcasters and stuff like that. And um, they so they launched at the beginning of the year and they launched. And now they're, I think, like 5000 members strong. Uh, already and they nice. they're doing they're doing amazing things at veteran hundo club and then i have uh may 20th uh two wolf foundation um another great organization then on the 26th i got beyond boundaries i'm super excited about this one because they don't just focus on veterans they focus on first responders but they also focus on all right so a lot of people say disabilities right well, they say people with other abilities. Uh, so people with Down syndrome, uh, autism, yeah. in a wheelchair. What they do is they take the, the people with other abilities and they get them out in nature, uh, whether it be kayaking, whitewater rafting, uh, rock climbing. Uh, they take people with other abilities and get them out there in nature. Um, and then I got Nick Buss uh, with Leaf Homes. Uh, coming up on the 27th of May, and he um, started a veterans ERG within Leaf Homes that they didn't have, um, and that's now nationwide. And then he just started two more nonprofits. So, uh, but that rounds out my month of May, man. And um, June is completely booked. Uh, July is starting to fill up. 
Uh, I got our boy Scotty Hastings coming up in August. Um, and that's because nice. he's got some new, uh, he's got some news that's going to be coming out in August. So, um, Matt, I, I love it. And I, I'm not going to slow down. Let's just put it that way. Um, and I'm not, not, I'm not going to release the good news yet because it's not official, but <clears throat> if you want to, you can. Huh? Oh, wait, good go yeah, go for it, man. Well, it's not official yet. Well, Okay, well, it's going to be official. <laughs> oh, it's going to be official. So I will be, Home Front Sit Rep will be joining uh, MUPS, Military United Podcast Stream. So uh, Absolutely. I'm super excited about that and get to, you know, hang out with Brian, get to hang out with uh, Donald Dunn and, and see what you guys are doing and help you guys build MUPS to what you guys want. And so I'm, I'm super excited about that. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, it's... You know, it's definitely on the, the infancy stage, but it's something that we have big visions for. And I think you will be a great addition to it. Um, you, you know, your podcast is, is, is doing great things by putting the word out there and showing everybody all the different types of things that there are available for them. Because that's one of the things before I even got into podcasting, bro, I had no clue how many different organizations there were. Yeah, I was like, oh shit, there's hunting, there's shooting, there's jumping out of planes, there's freaking skateboarding, book clubs. I mean, almost anything to fit your need or your something that you like. And that you know, it's a, it's and, and the great part about it is you're connecting with a whole bunch of like minded people, right? Yeah. So it's just it's killing two birds with one stone. One, you're doing something you like and you really like, but you're doing it with people you like. Too, yeah right? yeah and that you can enjoy your time with so it's twofold um but dude i really appreciate you coming on man and i really well, thanks for having taking me. the time and obviously you and i um it's the beginning of a, a, a brotherhood yes and, sir uh, we're definitely gonna you know yeah. be doing some great things and you're gonna be a great addition to mups and um definitely gonna be able to help us with that as well uh is there any last you know little thoughts anything you want to say before we head out well i just want to say well, something i say on my podcast all the time you always have to ask the next hard question uh, because if you go up to a veteran uh, and you ask them how they're doing more than likely they're going to say i'm fine but then you you just got to look them in them eyes in their eyes and say hey how are you really doing because that might save their life um it, it, you know one veteran one veteran at a time that's, that's how we're going to end 22 a day is one veteran at a time. If I reach one veteran today, that veteran is going to turn around and help somebody tomorrow. And that's just a, a trickle down effect. And it's just, you know, one, one thing, and one veteran at a time, uh, ask the next hard question, um, get out there, man. Just don't, don't, don't be a scuttlebutt and stay in the house. You got to get out, get out and, you know, hang out with like-minded people, uh, like Brian and, and Donald Dunn, myself, and, you know, <clears throat> the guys from Triple Threat Vets podcast. Go to sameflagsameoath.com. Go to co-branded shirts. Find that shirt right there. Order it. When you do order it and you get it, and put it on, take a picture, uh, go on the social media, media and tag Homefront Sit Rep. Uh, make sure you go follow our page on Facebook. We also have a private group on Facebook and then our YouTube channel. Uh, so it's at the public page is at home front sit rep podcast. The private group is home front sit rep. And then on YouTube, it's at home front sit rep podcast, I believe, or just at home front sit rep. But uh, yeah, you I'll can definitely sure put all that in the, I'll make sure I put it all in the description. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. And you, and you, and you can definitely follow us and uh, see what we got coming up. Like I said, we're, we got some great shows and uh, I'm super excited to you know be joining the MUPS team. I want to thank you for coming on my show uh, coming up. And I want to thank you for uh, allowing me to spend time on your show. Um, I've been following you for a little while and uh, you and Travis, matter of fact, since uh, I first seen you. And then uh, uh, it, it's just amazing the the collection of uh, veteran podcasters out there that are very like-minded. And, and like you said earlier in the conversation, we just gravitate towards each other and, uh, right. it, it's just amazing. And I, I think the more that we get in this little collaborative, 
um, the the more veterans we can help. So thanks again. That's our mission, bro. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And once again, I I appreciate you, brother. You keep uh, doing amazing things and and 100% my number now. And uh, this is this is a brotherhood. So uh, starting a beautiful friendship. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) All right, brother. I appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, friends and fam. Well, that's going to wrap up another great interview. Uh, as we were talking about Hero Stock, guess what? Hero Stock is going to be here June 29th. That's already next month, right? And this one is going to be in Rolla, Missouri. And I'm telling you right now, the lineup for this is amazing. You got Shannon Book. He is amazing. Derek Stoner. Barbara Sim and JB Brown. I'm telling you, that lineup alone is going to be amazing. They're also going to have a car show there. And uh, it's going to be one of those uh, events that you're going to walk away saying, I want more. I promise you that. Um, But if you guys can't make that one, there's going to be some more coming out. I know there's going to be one in Tennessee and another one in Nebraska. So uh, don't uh, don't worry. I will definitely be hyping it up here on the show. And you will know all about it. But all right. That's going to be enough. I hope you guys have an amazing day out there. Remember how I say, don't let the day kick your ass. Make sure you're out there kicking it. Till next time, we'll see y'all. Urgh.